Patrons, to our new episode of Patreon with Cheese, we've left the realm of the Schmigadoon, and I am joined, as always, by my wonderful Patreon with Cheese co-host, Liz Esten. Hello, How are you Liz. Hello, I'm good. I think I don't know. You think? I don't know. You know what? I discovered my front tail. That's how I use the bathroom, so I'm having yeah. a pretty good day. I don't have a front tail. I mean, it's internalized, but it's it's kind of there. I guess we're, oh, we're starting this off on a real real we high are... note here. Oh God! <laughs> um, so we were lucky enough to watch Cinderella on Amazon Prime, starring Miss Cabello, Cabello, Camilla Cabello. Okay, Camilla Cabello. Yeah. And Adina Menzel and James Cordon Bleu and Discount Sean Mendes. And Minnie Driver and the best part of the Mamma Mia movies, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. There's a lot of kings being dragged in this movie, is what we're saying. There's a lot of dragging happening, yeah. Yeah, not a single drag in, though. A lot no, of dragging, though. but they don't have the budget for that. So. Oh, and Billy Porter. Um, oh, yeah, he's in the movie for like two minutes. That's great. But he's so good in those two minutes. I know, he's so good. <sighs> I felt like alive, I felt something. Yeah, I was actually excited for a minute, and then James Corden showed up, and... <sighs> <sighs> So, how about we start with positives? Are there any? Uh, there's a couple. I know. There's not many, but I'm there's kidding. a couple. I think Adina Menzel is good. Agreed. She did great. I think Material Girl is the strongest random song that doesn't make sense. Yes, if we're going by that criteria, I agree. Um, I like the way that she played it and the reframing of the evil stepmother character. I thought all of that was interesting. Yeah, I like how she was kind of like sympathetic towards her, but just saw a lot in her. I like that aspect of it. Uh huh. And the jealousy of it, like yeah, like she has, of- she's the confidence to aspire for more, and she tried and failed and hasn't been brave enough since. And that was it was nice. And I can see why Cinderella's dad would want to fuck Adina Menzel. Like I it mean, makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah. I mean, given like half a chance, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be there. Heartbeat. <laughs> um. The production design, meaning the castles they found, they're all very practical locations used very, very well. Yeah. That looks good. I think the town square looked good, too. It didn't look... It looked like an actual town square. Yeah, it didn't look like a set. Yeah, it looked like a place people would actually go shopping. And I think the costumes aren't bad. They Um, are theater good, if that makes sense. They're They're not, like, realistic, but they work. Yeah, like, Cinderella's dress during the ball, I still have questions about it. Like, I don't understand it. Okay, I was about to say, I'm not one to comment on fashion design. I remember when that 20 whatever year Beauty and the Beast movie came out, they're like, the dress is ugly. I'm like, oh, it's a dress? Here, I'm like, the dress is ugly. (laughs) I don't mind the top of it. I think the skirt is not flattering to the hips. They make them look bigger. Because yeah, of the yeah. jutting fabric on the hips. Like, that is the disaster waiting to happen. I mean, I don't know. I'm also bad at fashion. I wear t-shirts and con- t-shirts and Converse on a daily basis. So, like, no judgment on whoever designed that dress. But it could have been better. Also, why is she been. wearing sleeves instead of gloves? She's just... It's weird. It's weird. There's so much weird. Billy Porter, like, Delightful. gave her what she wanted. Yeah. Um, I started watching this three different occasions. This is probably one of the roughest things I've ever had to watch for the show. Only because, like, there's nothing new. There's no, not going to be a surprise, really. We all kind of know what this story is, and they're not trying to reinvent the wheel here as much as the ads try to make you think it is. Um, so I just found no drive to finish it. Um, I finished it literally a half hour ago. I, I, it's like cramming for a test right beforehand. And oh, right yeah. now I'm just still in the, the, the warmth of that horror. The TV is still warm for me dealing with this. Uh, oh God. Yeah. So, I watched it the day it came out ugh. just to get it over with. 
And then I watched it on Monday, just to also get it over with. And it was painful both times. I think I have a higher tolerance for these things, though. So I was like, I kind of got through it. Yeah, yeah. This is not the worst thing ever. Like, let's just say this. No, it's not. I think the hyperbole around it being, like, one of the worst things that come out this year, absolutely not. I mean, it peaks with really bad moments, but it's mostly just mediocre and boring. Yeah, like, I was mostly bored. I was never, like, cringing. It's like there's a scene in Space Jam 2 where Porky Pig starts rapping. That was the worst thing I've seen this year. (laughs) Bar none. That scene. The movie is, like, okay. If you're a kid, go watch it. But, like... Especially, uh, I don't mean to get on my Space Jam 2 soapbox. Um, I live in Detroit. Space Jam means a lot to a lot of black kids and I happen to have been around a lot of younger children because I was helping teach online classes when that movie came out and they loved Space Jam 2. They love seeing a black family in power being able to tell a story and I will forever defend Space Jam 2 for what that meant oh, to yeah. those kids. I Yeah, that that's great. It's a great thing to hear. I also got kind of got that feeling like I, I'm, I'm sure like lots of black kids are just like thrilled that the main character looks like them. Like, yes. And that it's not, like, a black pain story. Like, even... Okay, did you ever watch a film um, forced down your throat by, like, the school it's called My Friend Martin? No. Okay, let me let me throw... Th- we're, we'll, we'll get back to Cinderella. Don't worry. Let me tell you what the pitch of this movie is. Okay. <laughs> Three kids, one black, one Puerto Rican, and one white kid, all go back in time, and they get to be there for all Martin Luther King's big life events. <laughs> This is familiar to me. Okay. And they're like, oh, here's him as a kid. And oh, here's him at the bus boycott. Oh, here's him at the March on Washington. And they're like, man, he did so many great things. Oh, no, he was assassinated? Well, we got to pull him out of that time and save him. So they get little boy Michael... Or sorry, little boy Martin Luther King, bring him back to the present, and we see the world and how it would have looked if Martin Luther King didn't exist. Or every, it's like post-apocalyptic, and Martin Luther King is like, "Well, I guess I gotta go back in time and die," <laughs> and we see him walk through the door and get shot. And I'm like, "But not even like this film about how great Martin Luther King is. We we can't be spared the idea of him getting murdered." <laughs> Oh my god. It's a cartoon too. This isn't like a live action thing. You you could have just not shown it. Yeah, this is really bad. And every year on Martin Luther King Day, they'd roll in the fucking TVs and be like, "Oh my god. I thought I <sighs> watched I watched freaking I watched a movie based on Flyers for Algernon in middle school and I thought that was bad to give show to children." <laughs> there was one in middle school that was like a rite of passage film where once you got to this class, you got to watch it, and it was Apocalypto in our oh, world God. history class. And you got to see a, a lady's vagina and a baby come out of it. Yeah, I watched Beowulf in high school, and there's a lot of boobs in that movie. Censored boobs. There's, like, a lot of Austin Powers censorship in that movie. There is. It's a very strange movie. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis, what were you doing? I don't know. Uh, anyway, Back Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> uh, what did you think of Camilla Cabello? Uh... She's trying. I've got, I've got, this is a thing I find with actors, especially new actors. I don't know where she comes from. I, I am, is she a Disney Channel person? She was on the, I believe she was on the American, she was on, no, no, that was Little Mix. Uh, No, she was just in a pop group. She was in Fifth Harmony. That makes sense. She was the first one to leave the group to do a solo career because she was the most popular. So she was the Beyonce of the group. She, yeah, she's the Beyonce of the group. Uh, and now she's most famous for walk taking walks with Shawn Mendes in the street. So. All right, all right, all right. This all makes sense. There's a thing with new actors, be it that they're young and inexperienced or older and trying something out, where they are terrified of looking bad. Yeah meaning they have to look 100% perfect in every scene, and if there's a laugh, they need to be the one getting it. And that was the vibe I got, where she never wanted to be in the background. There's stories I hear about Madonna when she was just starting her acting career where she had her own lighting and makeup people to design every set around the DP to make sure she always looked 100%. And I get that vibe here from Camila Cabello, where she is not 
into it the same way. She's embarrassed to be goofy. Where yeah. you've got people that are very secure, like Pierce Brosnan and Minnie Driver. That's like, yeah, I'm here for the camp. <laughs> Vinnie Driver was the best part of that Phantom movie. She she knew what she was in. She knew it was up. Yeah. She knows how to play the humor perfectly. And same with Pierce Brosnan. He now knows what to do with his voice. Um, he makes fun of his off. own parable singing. It's amazing. Exactly. It's great. And I will give credit-ish to the very bland prince. He knows when to kind of step back and when the laugh is his and when the moment's his and when it's yeah. not. I think he does a half decent job. Not to, I don't remember this actor's name. And I, nope. I uh, honestly, he'll probably see him in something down the line and like him in it better. But I think what with what he's given, the prince character in Cinderella adaptations doesn't really get much to work with. He's a he's a thing to be. He's a conquest in a way. Yeah, he's, he, he's not a character. He's a unless you're watching Cinderella three, a twist in time, which is one of the best the Cinderella best. adaptations. Yes, don't at me. <laughs> Like he's not a character. He's like a he's a no. Nah, he's literally an object at this point. Yeah, he's an object. He's an obtainable thing. The king has more. The king has more of an arc than he does. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have an arc. His arc is to realize that he doesn't have to listen to his own dad. Which yeah. like I know Pierce Brosnan is your dad and he's the king, but like don't listen to Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> it's not hard. No. I will say if. The on- the only one that I really thought, yeah, I, I get you, was the sister character. The frustrated oh. sister character. She was, like, the best character in this. I related to her so much. I loved Wish her. Wish I didn't give her a Karen haircut, though. She did not need that haircut. I, I loved her, though. I loved in every scene she was pointing out a problem with the kingdom. She's like, is this <laughs> a good time to point out we have very high rates of poverty? I have a plan that'll help us, like, with the lower income districts. And they're like, oh, we don't care. We got to have a ball. You're a lady. You're not allowed to do dipl- diplomacy, which connects the whole Cinderella can't open a business because she's a woman thing. But it's... Wouldn't it have been great if she fell in love with the, the sister oh instead? God, that would have been so much better. No one ever listens to my pitches. Yes, people should. Everyone listen to, listen to this. Someone make a Cinderella movie where she falls in love with a princess. Instead of a prince, someone like do they that. have the ball, but she's like not interested in the prince. She's totally into the princess, and then yeah. we have two queens ruling the land. That'd be great. I love that. Give that to the children. But I just I recently watched Ella Enchanted again, um, yeah. and also they sing "Somebody to Love" there, which and is it better, is much better. And many drivers in that too. The more oh, I think yeah, about it, oh yeah, she's the fairy who fucks everything no. up. Oh, no, no she isn't. She's just some girl that's also in the movie. Oh yeah, also she has nothing in that, to do in that movie. It's crazy. Um, yeah, that's much better than this. Um, yeah. That movie knows what it is. This film decidedly does not know what it is. It's like trying to appeal to six markets while not appealing to any of them. Apparently, it did though, because remember, this is the yeah. number one streaming movie at the moment, and is the yeah. most downloaded and most reacted to musical of 2021 thanks and part of me gets it World. like you know these songs you know these people you, you people know the story bullshit you know what's gonna happen there's no shock value you can show it to your yeah. kids and not worry about what's gonna happen i mean they talk about their penises a lot for a film about cinderella but whatever that's true they don't say the word penis though they say front tail so it's okay yeah, no it isn't <laughs> Stop, stop. Don't defend this movie, Liz. No, I thought we were on the same side here. No, I no, I will not have this slander put on my name. I refuse to defend this film. But then again, if you think about it, we are part of the problem. Um Yeah, the we big... did hate watch this we and I spent it. three times trying to hate watch it. Yeah, I watched it twice and it was a hate watch and that's the big issue with these types of movies is people will watch them out of morbid curiosity, but it gets views gives producers money and then they make more and then people get more mad yes you are completely correct here that's why there's Um, three kissing booth movies guys it's your fault for watching the first one and hating on it is that how it works what's the kissing booth i've never heard uh it's it's a it's a teen netflix rom-com based on a wattpad fan fiction that got turned to a book that's all you need to know so 50 shades got it yeah but that was on fanfiction.net it was classy (laughs) Okay, what's the difference between Wattpad and fanfiction and then an archive of our own? Uh, archive of our own is the classy of the, uh, oh! of the the classiest of the three fanfiction websites. My girlfriend showed me some dirty stuff on there. Is, that, is it really that classy? Well, they actually let you put the dirty stuff on there. Fanfiction.net just bans it. So Real? What? 
Yeah, it's they have the internet. Yeah, they have like very big moderating on fanfiction.net. Uh and Wattpad is just um uh, there's a lot of bad stuff on Wattpad. Uh um, Bad is in like not of quality or dirty. Not of quality and also possibly dirty. Uh there's a big subgenre on Wattpad. There was for a time anyway of One Direction During the Purge, uh, which was very interesting. And I watched a Jenny Nicholson video about a Wattpad fanfiction called Trapped on an Island with Josh Hutcherson. That's the actual title. It's Jane. that grammatically incorrect. But yeah. So, I'm not going to lie. So if I wanted to write a fanfiction about uh, 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 Scar- Scarlett Johansson's character, what's, what's her name? Black Widow giving the Hulk a rim job, I would not be allowed to put it on fanfiction.net, but I would be allowed to put it on an archive of our own and Abs- Wattpad? Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. I hope this you haven't written that together. yet. I mean, but... it, it, it's I've got some interested investors here. Oh, God. Anyway... <laughs> What would be the most sad response to that question? I think I knocked it out. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, God. My editors need to get back with me, but I think we might have something here, Liz. Okay. I'm so proud of I mean, of how you. would she do it? Like, I don't, I don't want to think about that. <sighs> All right. Okay, fine. You want to talk about Cinderella? Do you have more to say here? Billy Porter. Okay. I mean, Speaking that's the goal of- here. <laughs> Speaking of what happened with Billy Porter and the scene with Camilla Cabello, this is the worst part because it feels like they're fighting each other for the main attention of the scene. Oh, yeah. And I'm wondering if you felt that, too, or if that was just all in my head. I think in the moment, I wasn't even paying attention to Camilla Cabello, so I can't even... um... She doesn't like to be in the sidelines, I don't think. At least that was the vibe I got from the scene. I got the vibe from that her in general. Um, Honestly, I couldn't corroborate that because I wasn't paying attention to Camila Cabello in that scene at all. I was only paying attention to Billy Porter because he's the best part of this movie and he was saving me from the pain I was feeling at that point. But I hated, uh, I hate that song. When you wish upon a star. I I, yeah, that song. It's just really generic. Like all the songs are generic. That's literally. If the song was used in one of the Scooby Doo movies, best not to use it in your in your movie musical. Yeah, El Enchanted we use it. El Enchanted used somebody to love already. Don't yeah. try to step on that. We're kind Rhythm... of done with Queen. We're, we're done with that. Put Rhythm that in the Nation pin. was the opener. Who's that by? Janet Jackson. Oh, surprised I didn't use any of her her brother's work. I'm not surprised. It's not good for optics these days. <laughs> What are you talking about? There's about to be a Broadway musical about Michael Jackson coming soon. Oh, that's true. I guess we're over at that now. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know about these optics. HBO just added back all the Harry Potter movies, so I don't know how people are feeling again. I don't know. Are they still making that third Fantastic Beast and where where to find them thing with Mads Mikkelsen taking over for Johnny Depp? Uh, I think the second one did so bad it's kind of up in the air. I think they're filming it. I th- I think it's being filmed right now. Oh, good Lord. Uh, why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. You don't need five of these. You don't need five of these. I like the first one is the thing. I really actually enjoyed the first one quite a bit. And the second, second one's one is terrible. Oh, yeah. I've only seen the second one. I haven't seen the first one, but. First one's fine. It's it's fine. Oh, I God. saw it double featured with Rogue One, and I enjoyed it much more than Rogue One. Let me just say it like that. Okay, that's, yeah. Rogue One is pretty bland, though. Oh, so. you think so too? I feel like that's like a, a, a controversial opinion nowadays. Um, I, my Rogue One is a fine movie. Like I enjoyed it, but I, do I remember a lot of it? No. Do you remember Bo- Borgullet? I don't remember. I only the remember the tentacle creature that attacks Riz Ahmed. No, I don't remember that at all. That's the best part. He's like he just attacks. It's a, the most wackadoo scene in the entire movie that I was like, why didn't this get cut? I just remember Riz Ahmed being in it. That's all I remember. Yeah. And I remember the last scene where Diego Luna and Felicity Jones, I think that's her name, are like about to die. And then the movie cuts to CG, weird CG Leia. And that's all I remember. Um, You forgot Darth Vader. He went down a hallway. Oh, yeah, Darth Vader. Oh, choo, 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 choo. Choo. Does, I, I remember watching that. And I was like, oh, this is fan <laughs> service. This doesn't make any sense for the time period. Because Darth they Vader reshot didn't... it two months before the movie came out. Darth Vader doesn't fight people in this timeline. It would have been so much cooler if he just kind of like Stormtrooper, like literally just the opening of A New Hope again. Yeah, let's just recreate the opening of A New Hope. That's fine. It's all- yeah, like 
I don't like him using his lightsaber. It would have been much cooler if he just used the force and just everyone flew up and then he's like, all right, I'm done with that. Or like he, he like, doesn't have to pull out the lightsaber. Or he like simultaneously force chokes a guy and then tosses another guy in the air. Like that would have been fucking yeah. great. Like uh, keep it physical. Save Lightsabers aren't that cool, guys. We can all, we all have after effects. The, 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 the novelty is worn off. That's yeah. We all have after effects. And we all have YouTube to teach us how to make lightsabers. So just like, yeah. If there is one thing the sequel trilogy gave us, it's that they emit light in the scene now. They actually use like an actual like oh, yeah. LED sword, so it it shines on their face. I like that. That's yeah. it. That's the one good thing that oh, and the Last Jedi, which is the best Star Wars movie ever made. I won't go there. I will. <laughs> I would say it's a good movie. I'm a defender. Um, yeah, that's fine. Is there anything good to t- talk about Cinderella anymore? Like, um, uh, was there any musical number that stood out to you as really, really good? No. There either. Anytime the the town crier came out, I was like, oh, all yeah. right, I'll, I'll I watch loved, you. I loved this community theater discount Hamilton they were throwing at us. Mm-hmm. I loved it. It was great. I thought the town crier had good energy. It was like, oh god, I don't hate myself right now with this discount. He should have been the prince. Yeah, he should have been the prince. He would have been great prince. He actually has charisma. No offense to the other dude, but dear God, you have nothing to work with. The uh, Grier just... is great. Uh, Material Girl is pretty good. Yeah. I uh, liked the stepsisters. Anytime they were on screen, I was enjoying myself. Oh, yeah. And it was the it was a chick from Hairspray Live. It was one of the, he- one of the stepsisters. Oh, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she she's great, and she did a great job being just like with her like little one off jokes. Like, okay, she's actually funny. And they never steal the show. They never hold too long on them. Unlike the rats, when they become men, where it's just like, oh, we're just sticking with them for a bit, are we? Okay. There's a during the ball scene after they dance and and sing an Ed Sheeran song that they play at every wedding now. Oh, dear God, what song was that? That Perfect. was an Ed Sheeran song. That song? I, uh, I am d- disconnected from the culture, Liz. It's, it's thinking out loud, but different, essentially. But they are, they're in a romantic montage, and they keep cutting to the rats doing random stuff. And it's terrible. Like, there's a part where they're like, they're, they cut to Sir and the Prince walking, and then they cut to one of the rats talking to the horse, being just like, blink if you understand me. I'm like, what does this add to the movie? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let's talk about cinematography for a minute. Uh, Let mm, this felt film schooly to me. Yeah, it did. I think I wrote that in my initial tweet, and I'm trying to figure out what I meant by that because it is a vibe that you get. Um, and I think as I finish it, I come to terms with it. They shot on the Alexa Mini, which is a very small camera, mm-hmm. and they shot some pickups with the Red X, which is even smaller. It looks like they just threw it on a gimbal and said, just do the scene and we'll figure it out, but we're going to make sure every shot is moving. But yeah. it, you see the footsteps of the cameraman almost with every take, and it doesn't look great. Um, it feels like someone just bought a Ronin S and was like, I'm going to use it for every shot, you know, like every student in film school. And they're like, also, I'm going to bring the F-stop all the way down so we have the blurry background effect so you know it's cinematic. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a big problem with this. It's, like, always trying to be more cinematic, but in trying to be cinematic, it's less cinematic? (laughs) Yep, and that's kind of... And the content within it feels less cinematic. And the editing, when you have a lot of moving shots, you kind of need to have some stationary ones that kind of bridge you between moments, but if every shot is... And we like moving shots. Moving shots are a good thing, and it keeps energy. But if every shot is just moving constantly, you have a very difficult time editing. Um, Like, there's about four or five times where they break the 180-degree rule, where I'm just like, okay, I'm on the other side now, because you probably shot this already and had nowhere to edit in between. You didn't do basic coverage, you just shot on a gimbal. Yeah, like, million to one has a big camera spinning problem. It's always just spinning. Yeah. yeah. Also, that sounds super generic, but that's not <laughs> the part of this conversation. But I, it's like it feels like it's trying hard to be something it's not. Yes. If it embraced its like lifetime ABC Family right. quality that it's probably more likely to go for, like a decom level of like production value in terms of cinematography. If they embrace that, I would have been fine with this movie. But like, they didn't. They didn't. They wanted to be something more than they were, and their budget allowed them, and then they just ended up being bad. 
They thought they were a movie. They're not a movie. They're a TV movie. L- let's talk about representation for a minute. I love representation. It can make something better and add a lot of context to it. But that does not automatically make something good. Like this being directed and written by a woman, great. You know what? That's fantastic. Does it does it automatically make it good or something like I think is quality? No. No. Uh, I don't like the Pitch Perfect movies, um, and she was one of the driving minds behind those. I did not like Cock Blockers, which is the other film this this girl has directed. I liked the first Pitch Perfect movie, and I liked Blockers. Is it just Blockers? It's called. It's just Blockers. The marketing with the co- the rooster in it as a joke. It's just called Blockers. Oh, it's not called Cock Blockers. Okay. No, that was just a marketing joke. I liked Blockers, and I like Pitch Perfect. That could be because I connected to it more as a woman. Which is fair. Which is Did fair. Did you connect to this? Like, I, no, I don't connect to this at all. <laughs> um, but um, I think Kay Cannon, to her credit, this movie doesn't feel like an idea she had. This feels no. like a movie, an idea James Corden and some of his friends had. And they were like, we need to get someone to direct it. So they hired a woman. I would agree with you if James Corden was in it more. Yeah. Well, do you, you know, like the feeling you get when you watch a James Corden movie? <laughs> yes, I've seen Cast 2019. Yeah, I've also seen it twice. Um, don't ask why. I've seen it more more times than I can count. So I'm so sorry. Uh, but you know the f- feeling you get watching a James Corden production? I had that feeling the whole time, even when he wasn't on screen. Okay, you know what feels like a James Corden production um, and, like, the definition of that is the prom movie. Yes. Like, that felt like a film made by James Corden for James Corden to bring up James Corden and maybe get him an Oscar nomination as James Corden. He got a Golden Globe nom. That's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. The movie's really bad. Yeah, and this gave me the prom vibes. um, Yeah. With a little pretend self-awareness. Yeah. So I think Kay Cannon does fine with what she has in front of her. I'm sure she was given a very strict outline when writing the script. And I think they were like, embrace your 30 Rock years. Be funny. Make it funny. Make it it really edgy. Make it fun. And she's just like, "Eh, I can't have it both ways. Yeah, like... The thing, Blockers is a very strange movie, but I think yes, it, it is. it's a very weird movie. It's, I mean, it's about parents trying to stop their p- children from losing their virginity on prom night. Like, yep. the entire premise of this movie is weird. Like, I don't know. My dad would never do that. So, <laughs> he's not that crazy. But what makes it work is she's coming from a genuine place, and it feels like a, a story she wanted, like a story she thought of and she wanted to right. tell. <clears throat> From the perspective of someone who was a teenage girl who probably hadn't, who had probably had an overprotective dad who's just like, I will stop you. And it's about connecting with your mm-hmm. family at an age where that's difficult because you're changing and all that stuff. So that was, I, my de- that was my defense of blockers, everybody. It's off topic, yes. but you know. Yes. It just wasn't a film for me because I just don't tend to like studio comedies and that's a yeah. taste thing for me. Um, yeah. I'm a sucker for studio comedy. Problem. I just yeah. I recently watched Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar and it's delightful. I recommend I that immensely to recover from your Cinderella pain. I will take your word for that and watch it with like my mother when she decides to crum- come across it. It is so weird. I don't know, I think your mother will find it very weird. <laughs> she watches a lot of weird things. She's currently watching a horse show that has 13 <laughs> seasons that might have been produced by Lifetime. Oh, I have no, no idea. But every time I come in, I'm like, man, that horse show's still going. <laughs> Goddamn horse show. But, like, uh, yeah. This is a product of a studio. This is a product of executives. This is a product of white dudes thinking feminism means rejecting men and working. This is a Sony product, which is something we haven't brought up and is seen very, very little in the marketing. I thought this was an Amazon product, you know, kind Sony. of like so let's think about sony's other musical um the first one that comes to mind was annie 2014 oh yeah they made that yeah they made that um and this feels part and parcel with the same minds behind annie 2014 so this is something that's coming to my head i think a lot of the blame does not belong on the actors director or writers shoulders I know that Sony loves to fuck up a movie. That's like their favorite thing in the world. Look at Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's like their 
That's like their bread and butter here. Um, oh, yeah. And Annie 2014 is one of the worst, worst musical adaptations of all time. Not because of the racial element. That is actually one of three good things in that movie. <laughs> Kumanjane Wallace, it's, she deserves way more than she's... She really does. She's incredible. Have you incredible. seen Beast of the Southern Wild? Oh, yes, I have. It's incredible. I loved it. I loved it. She's incredible. Kumanjane Wallace is incredibly talented. Jimmy Fox is not a bad choice to play Daddy Warbucks. No. None of these choices are inherently bad. No? It's just the way it came out. Yeah, it's... But do you know how that film started, and then it fell apart I, I do not know the history of it no i just know when the trailers came out people got mad because annie was black yeah so. that's stupid um i was actually dumb. uh cautiously optimistic it I was, was excited like developed as a adaptation with willow smith starring as annie and will smith playing daddy warbucks and then willow smith got lost interest and got too old will smith left the project they're still there as producers um, and in that version, Sandra Bullock was going to play Miss Hannigan, which would have been oh, delightful in a different great. way. But they all left the project. Jamie Foxx was immediately replaced. Vanjane Wallace, fresh off her Oscar nomination, um, brought in. <clears throat> and then Cameron Diaz, in a career-ending role, um, was brought in to replace Sandra Bullock. Um, all, everyone involved in that movie has had their career very severely damaged in yeah. like nine different ways um most undeservingly kvanjane wallace who has not acted again since yeah she deserves I do better not, i do not like the way that sony does business and the way that they treat their properties in general not just musical theater properties the things that they own they just treat as pawns yeah and all of that so I think that they don't know what they want. They treat directors as hired hands and aren't a very good studio for creating good content. Yeah, absolutely. Like, also, I don't want to undercut this idea of having a Latina Cinderella. I think it's very, no. it's very important. It's very good representation. Camila Cabello does what she can, and she's new here. She's fresh. She's not really yes. acted before. Faith Harmony music videos do not count. No, they don't. They don't count, guys. <laughs> But I think, I'm not going to undercut that, but I think they used the, I think we need to, to try this again. Have a different Latina actor play Cinderella with an actual movie that isn't a product. Oh my God. James Corden was a producer on this movie. Yeah, he's an executive producer. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay, let me take a look at what the other production studio, uh, Full Well 73, what else have they done? Full Well 73. Oh, uh, nothing really worth of it. Um, One Direction, This Is Us, uh, that concert movie. Okay. They've produced a lot of music videos. Um, What was Camila Cabello's band? Uh, Fifth Harmony. Uh, none of their videos. They've done a lot of TV ads. Um, oh, this but... is a corporate company. <laughs> yes, they are big on music videos. Oh, and they produced The Late Late Show with James Corden. Oh, so it's a, it's all connected. Everything's connected. Everything is connected. So, it's a conspiracy. It's a UK-based company, um, and I want to know how this got made. There are a lot of British actors in this, like the side characters. A lot of them are British. It's like, they're yes. pretty nice. I think the other two guys who play the mice aren't terrible. No, they're fine because they're, they're fine. not James Corden. But James Corden is like the main mouse. So we have to look at him. Not to yeah, mention he's... that goddamn mouse head scene. Which, oh, God. Yeah. Um, My nightmares. And... Uh, so let's talk about James Corden for a bit, minute um, and how his rise to fame came about. Because he's producer on this. He is the main mouse. Um, let's talk about this. So about, oh, it has to be about Six, seven years ago, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Um, he was nobody, really. He was known as a character actor on, like, British television. You have seen him on Doctor Who. He was announced his first big claim to fame was being the baker in the Into the Woods movie. That was his big goal. That's the first time, um, I, time I saw him. Yes, that's a, a lot of Americans' first time seeing him. Yeah. Um, then David Letterman leaves The Late Show. Um, everyone expected... Craig Ferguson to take over. He was the one doing the Late Late Show for many years, and he would have been a good choice, and he's fun. They picked Stephen Colbert for a lot of reasons that make sense at the time, but in the long run have not made sense and not yielded great results. 
and they followed him. Um, Craig Ferguson left as soon as his contract was up because he felt like he wasn't wanted there, so he got out. And the gentleman that run, ran CBS, um, who is now been outed as a rapist and a horrible misogynist, um, he has been removed from CBS, was best friends with James Corden, and James Corden pushed himself to take that role um, over a lot of other people. <clears throat> and he was almost given the tonight, or the late show after Colbert's ratings dumped, like in late 2016, yeah. uh, when Colbert took a big dive in the ratings. Um they were like, all right, let's fire Colbert and bring Corden on to the Late Show. And then, you know, the Me Too thing happened, and CBS got rid of this guy, and now we're just stuck with James Corden for the rest of our lives. Dear God. So I just want you guys to be fully aware of why we deal with James Corden. James yeah. Corden outed a lot of people, because let's just think about it. He was a nobody. He wasn't like a well-known name or anything. Um, it was like a Conan O'Brien style risk to bring him on and give him his own show. Except Conan's and, actually likable, so ish. yeah. But people, but moms love James Corden. When <sighs> I when I saw this trailer on, my girlfriend's mom walked in the room and was like, "Oh, I love James Corden. I'll watch that." Yeah, I remember telling my mom about the prom movie, and I told her James Corden was in, and she's like, "Ooh, James Corden. He's cool. I don't understand why you hate him." And I'm like, <laughs> "So I went. I know this is Patreon. It's this might go on the main feed one day, but." Be aware, if you support James Corden, remember how he got there, and remember who got him there. Yeah, oh god. It's just, there's just so much of this movie. Like, this movie isn't this hard to watch, only because it's boring most yes, of the time. Is. Every time Cinderella and the Prince have a conversation, I just zone out. You know what, I actually kind of like them. They did have a little bit of chemistry together. Yeah, they had chemistry, but... It, there's just parts of it where I just zone out completely. I'm just like, you guys have been talking for so long and nothing has changed. Okay. Yeah. This is Stop talking. an hour and 47 minutes. It could have been an hour and 26 minutes. Easy. Yeah. Like, ugh, don't cut any of the town crier stuff. That's delightful. But yeah, no. Yeah. Just like. This, cut right? every song number in half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially somebody to love. It goes on for way too long. Yeah. They do the whole song. But Queen, you got you, you, Queen is the best musical band of all time, right? Like, yeah, we, everyone clearly. loves "We Will Rock You." Clearly, it's the best song ever written. Um, <sighs> I, I, I don't know what else to say about this movie. <laughs> so know. much that I went on a rant about James Corden and his fucking supremacy over the American culture. Honest, the general vibe of this movie is boring, and the songs are weird, and half of them make no sense. Like. The ball Why is this has, a jukebox musical? This is a Why jukebox musical with, I think, two original songs. I think Dream Girl is an original song. Is if it's a million to one. And a million to one. one. Which is that is now original? A, yeah, that's an original song. It's now okay, a... Okay, that sounds like a One Direction song or something. No, this is an original song. They probably wrote it for Camila Cabello. Like, or her songwriters wrote it for her. I don't know what's going on in her pop career. I don't really listen to her that much, but... yeah. Moulin Rouge ruined everything. It ruined the it musical did. theater industry forever. It did. But the as weird thing... I love that movie. Yeah, I love Moulin Rouge. Uh, the weird thing is with the... It's just it's a, it's a joke mark musical with a random original song in it so they can sell records. It's like... Okay. In A Million to One, I, I remember I was like making dinner one night and I was thinking about this movie for some reason. And for some reason, I started thinking about A Million Dreams from uh, yep. Greatest Showman. And they sounded alike in my head. You could say, you could say, you could say, it's crazy. Yeah, like, they sound the same. And uh, Adina Menzel sings another original song, I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, I can look it up. But, like, dream, she sings song like, there's you shouldn't dream or anything. Just marry a guy and say, fuck it. I agree. You know what? I'm into that. I'm going to go marry a guy and say, fuck it. Yeah, go for it. And fuck him, too. So he, you stay married to him. <laughs> That's how I do I, I'm going to trap him. I'm going to poke holes in his condom. That's how this works, right? I, I read that somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I am being sarcastic. I'm just clarifying. No, she's not. She means this. She means this. I'm clarifying for the audience so no one pregnant. misconstrues my words. You know, if you write this out uh, as a uh, long text, if you read that back, it just sounds like you're agreeing with me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I'm not agreeing. An with actor him. can make a choice to make that not sarcastic, where it's like, "Yeah, I just poke holes in the condom," and then you're like, "Yeah, totally." I will not take Instead the of, slander yeah, on my totally. name. <laughs> I'm hiring Camila Cabello. She's gonna take your place on Patreon with cheese. 
Uh, she's too busy making generic music and taking walks with her dog and Sean Mendez. So Sean Mendez, who is he? He's another pop singer who is, is a, he any good? I don't know. He's he, he's pretty generic. He's the most generic looking white man. One of those generic looking white men I've ever seen. He rose up during the Bieber era of pop music, where a bunch of white dudes. Oh, you mean. And- Peak pop music. Yeah. Best time. A bunch of white dudes with similar haircuts all started rising up at the same time when Bieber became a thing and record companies wanted to cash in on that sweet, sweet Bieber money. That Biebs. That Bieber money, which is now low because Bieber doesn't make good music anymore and he just makes clothes. So. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Bieber made good music at one point? He doesn't make good. <laughs> he never made good music. But I was a teenager during the Bieber era, so I was supposed to like him. I did it. Um, I remember all the girls I had crushes on in high school like liked him. Yeah, I wasn't one of those. They sh- someone showed me a Justin Bieber music video when I was like twelve, and I was like, "Why is this child trying to seduce me? Like, this is weird." And then One Direction, I was never into them in high school. I'm, I like them now in retrospect, but why? I don't know. I just the first thing I heard was "What makes it's you Harry beautiful." Styles from. Yes. One Direction? Okay. And I love Harry Styles. He's an icon. Yeah. I mean, I... he's definitely fucking uh, Olivia Wilde, which makes him iconic to me. Truly. Him and Jason Sudeikis, Wiener Cousins. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, oh, Wiener Cousins. That's a weird word. <laughs> <sighs> they will always share that. Yeah, I guess they'll share that, and also presumably custody of their children. I wonder if either of Jason Sudeikis' kids were like real big One Directioners and then finds out that their mom's fucking Harry Styles. <laughs> like one of them starts so like, listening you... to One Direction's like, is this mommy's boyfriend? Jason Sudeikis is like, turn that shit off! Uh, no, he he's takes not. takes another swig of vodka. Oh god. Well, he's he's drunk. he has a Ted Lasso money now, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, that compares to like directing book smart money. I mean, it didn't do very good at the box office. So. Didn't did it not? I love. No, it didn't. It was directed by a woman. And it was an independent production, so. But it was so good. Yeah, it was excellent. But just... Caitlin Dever fingers uh, Margaret Qualley's butthole. It's a great movie. It's great. Beanie Feldstein is um, amazing as usual. Has she ever been bad? No, she's always good. I mean, she's playing Monica Lewinsky her... right now. Yeah, have you seen her in What We Do in the Shadows though? Yes. She's so good in that. She's so f- I've only seen like three episodes, but I love her so much. Oh my God, I gotta watch we that do in show the show again. Shadows is so flipping good. Yeah, the like, movie's also it's... excellent. I like the show a little better. I've only seen three episodes, so I can't Matt say. Matt Beery, yet. Barry, at lo- uh, uh, in and of himself, his existence in that show makes it better. Oh yeah. I quote things from him at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> she speaks the bullshit. <laughs> uh, also, I love Nadia on the episodes I've seen. She's great. Yeah, Nadia is so, Nadia is so good. So wonderful. She's just so done with everybody, and I love her at all times. She's done. Like, I love it. I think my favorite episode is the one where they're trying to plan an orgy, and just like the usual party planning shit is just falling apart it's oh god top tier content and it makes me realize no sitcoms aren't dying no they aren't they are they're just having new formats sure young Thank sheldon still that. exists but you know we can leave that for the moms uh, but I, I don't know what else to say about cinderella besides the fact i'm bored with half yeah like it's not offensively terrible like sure there is the thing where it equates being a successful feminist woman with not having a man because it undercuts your success. I have that's I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. But I guess it rectifies it later by saying it's not true, but not actually saying it's not true. Liz, you're going to have to break up with your boyfriend if you're going to want to have any success ever. Um yeah, I'm afraid I am. you cannot be getting laid and um be a successful woman at the same time. Yeah, that's what this movie taught me. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Our 5 year anniversary is coming up, so You should do it the day before. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great way to deal with blow. <laughs> I watched this movie and it taught me that feminism is bad. Um, um, hey, 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 what's your boyfriend's name again? His name's Matt. Hey, Matt, Matt, Matt. You're going to want to sit down for this. So I think you might have already guessed, but we watched Cinderella the other night and it gave me a revelation. I cannot fuck you and be a strong, independent woman. Get your shit. We don't live together, <laughs> so that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> No, he drove like the three hours it took, and then you just tell him to get out. Well, it's you only wait f- for him to unpack and everything. To his credit, it's only forty-five minutes to my house. So, oh. 
You must take him somewhere that's three hours away. Wait the full three-hour drive. Then when he gets there, wait for him to unpack, and then you give him this speech. Wow, that's savage. It's it's how you got to do it, that's, or else they're going to keep coming back. That's savage. Oh, my God. And you want to be a strong, independent woman, don't you? Moran, if you're listening to this, you might want to also be a strong, independent woman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's funny because you think she'd listen to these. That's the funniest thing I've heard all week. That's why I said if. <laughs> she 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 wouldn't listen to this if I paid her, let alone pay to listen to this. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, Miranda, you're good. In her own words, if I wanted to hear you babble about musicals, I'd just spend time with you. Yeah. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this movie's really bad. Uh, it but is. like in a boring way. It's not remarkable in any way, nor entertaining. Nope. Go watch the Apple instead. Yeah, go watch the Apple, or uh, go watch Cinderella three. That's also a musical. Yeah, that, or, we should review that next week. Yeah, or watch a uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Um, that's also. Or kind what of... we do in the shadows. There's a lot of good things. Yeah, out or like there. that's also a musical. Technically, they sing. Right. Yeah, they sing. They sing I'm a sure couple times. Original that songs movie. have been. Evan yeah. Rachel Wood shows up in one episode. Yeah, no, no, I was she, talking about um, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. That is technically oh. a musical. They are they're singing in that. I did not oh. expect it, but it was delightful. So watch Billy Madison. That that's technically a musical. But yeah, watch Billy, or watch. I don't know. Walk hard. The Dewey Cox story. Just anything. Well, maybe we should we should do that one someday. We that's should. Such a good movie. We should. If you do it on the that main, a if you do it on the main podcast, just have. Oh, me I'll on. bring you in. Hell yeah. yeah, I love that movie. Or just watch anything with singing in it that isn't this. Just don't don't even hate watch it. Don't no, don't, don't hate watch things, time. guys. The Andrew Lloyd Webber one's better. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's really. Not... I would rather listen to Bad Cinderella than watch any more of this movie. Yeah, if it's a million to one, I'm gonna be that one. <sighs> also, right before they started singing, when they were like dancing at the ball, I nearly vomited from like the cheese, the cheesiness of but... it all. Just like, it's oh my god, why this it. song? Why this song? <laughs> murder it. Murder it. That's our review. We give it a murder it out of 10. Murder Speaking it out of, what, of what's 10. What's your cheese rating? Uh, oh, my cheese rating is blue cheese because I hate blue cheese and it's boring. Uh, This doesn't even deserve any actual proper cheese, so I'm going to give it blue cheese dressing. Oh, that's even better. Because it doesn't even deserve to be a cheese. Yeah, we're going to call it a cheese, but it doesn't deserve it. Actually, I'm, change- I'm going to change my cheese rating to that vegan cheese that you put on vegan pizzas. Oh, God, yeah. I I love vegan pizzas, but if you let that thing sit on there more than five seconds, it is barely even. A- it, like, removes any kind of solidification it had. Yeah, no, it's 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 weird, and it's a product of a company that sucks. So. Just like Amazon Prime Cinderella. Oh, God, yeah. Don't watch it. That's what I have to say. Just don't watch watch Annette and listen to the musical cheese episode on Annette. Hey, did you listen to it? I am going to. Wow. All right. We'll see you next time on Patreon with Cheese. Don't watch Cinderella. Don't watch it, please. Do anything else with your life. Literally do anything else with your life. It's so much more fulfilling. Touch grass. All yeah, right. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm gonna be the sun and I just can't